What's up, guys? Well, I figured I've had this case long enough and used it long enough to uh, give a little review. So, I figured let's get started. Um, first off, it's a Dark Flash Phantom. It is technically a mid-tower case, even though it's extraordinarily tall. It does not, it is not considered a full tower, amazingly enough. Take a quick uh, look around all the ports and whatnot real quick. So we've got our power button here, power light, hard drive activity, reset, two old school USB 2.0 ports, your uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone right there. Then you've got the two USB 3.0 ports right here. And then you have an RGB switch in case your batteries and your remote die or you don't feel like using your remote. Then we have room up here for either a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator. And up front we have four of their little ring style fans. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to say this right now, they list this as being compatible with a 360 millimeter radiator, but I tried two and neither one would fit in here. They either get, they both get stuck up here and start pushing this whole module out. And plus, on the basement here, even if I take these fans out, the bottom of the reservoir tank of the radiator hits the bottom here and that's not cool so unless the unless dark flash people can tell me I, I've been tempted to just ask them straight up what what radiator did you guys use anyway though <clears throat> it also has two more 120 millimeter fans in the back so you have four in the front two in the back and then of course if you weren't using water cooling you could also put two more at the top and then, as you can see, I have three more at the bottom here, just for some bottom intake. Figure warm air rises, and I'm sure my video card appreciates the extra cooling. Move on down here, we do have a uh, power supply shroud. They have a little cutout down here for your power supply in case you have a cool one with RGB effects or any of that. Fortunately, mine's just a 1000 watt Corsair RM1000. <clears throat> It has a little little case badge here. It doesn't act, that actually didn't show up in the pictures when I bought it, so I, that was actually kind of cool. I think it's pretty sweet looking. Now, now on the other side here, we also have another glass side panel. So you have three glass side panels, one on this side one on the front and one over here so unfortunately it's kind of hard to make everything look neat I could probably have done a better job but it doesn't look that bad oh yeah that's technically what the fans are right there so if you wanted to get these for yourself you could go get this controller and put them in your case I actually think there's an upgraded model that has a uh, aura sync uh, compatibility and whatnot. Then there's a cutout for your uh, motherboard so you can put uh, water blocks and CPU coolers on there without having to take your motherboard out. I mean that's pretty much a case standard at this point. I'd be pretty upset if it didn't have that. We've got some cable management holes. I wish they would have included some rubber grommets. At least it's smooth so you're not going to cut yourself or your cords so at least they thought about that. There's another cable management hole there and there. And these are also where you would mount your SSDs if you had some. Then further down here all the way at the bottom, that's where you put both your hard drives. So you can put two uh, normal hard drives in the bottom there. <clears throat> and then that's where your power supply would sit. Now, putting a power supply of this size in there was actually kind of difficult. I had to connect all the cords ahead of time and then I had to bend something I had to bend a little bracket that was down right towards the bottom next to that 
just slightly to the left of that yellow, uh, yellow right there. <clears throat> and I had to bend that and then bend it back after putting it in, so. An RM1000 is about the limit on power supplies, which I feel is silly. This thing's pretty big. I feel like you could fit a more normal sized uh, power supply in there, no problem, but I guess I was wrong. Okay, so I figured we'd take a quick look at the interior of the case. Up top, I have a 240 millimeter radiator installed. You could also put a 240 up there. You cannot put a 360, just like I said earlier in the video. There's SSD mount, so if you want to put one on the front, one of the ones that has a RGB or whatnot, you could. There's also uh, holes for cable management, which I probably could have done a little bit better job on, let's be honest, but this case isn't the easiest to cable manage with that clear glass back panel, as I said. If you make it too thick, you can't put the glass panel on without making the glass kind of bend. And you definitely don't want bent glass. That's just a recipe for disaster. Anyway, though, moving on down, you've got room for three 120s on the bottom, which is absolutely the max. As you can see, they come right out to the edge. You couldn't put no 140 millimeter fans there, even if you wanted to. There's also plenty of room for graphics cards. I mean, if it can handle this three slot uh, 2080 Ti, uh, then there, it should have no problem with any GPUs on the market. And even with the fans there, I could probably fit, barely fit another one of those in there for SLI if I was that crazy, which I'm done with multi-GPUs, honestly, so I'd never do that. But if somebody was so inclined, you could do Crossfire or SLI in this, no problem, even though, in my opinion, those things are kind of dead. But that's just my opinion. There's also some more ventilation back here. And then towards the bottom here, it's hard to see past the fans, but there's some cable management holes for all your front panel and your USB 3.0 and front panel audio and all that good stuff. The fans move some air. They're not that great, but they work good enough. And the fact that they give you all of these with the included price is nice. So you don't have to really go out and buy any more fans. This amount of fans is enough. The only reason I added more is because I'm doing overclocking on an eight core Ryzen CPU and I have this gigantic overclocking 2080 Ti here. So I added these fans here and I also took the dust filter off the top. These do come with a dust filter. I was actually thinking about repurposing the top one on the bottom because the bottom one kind of has a you, you kind of have to bend the thing take it out of place bend it let it go back in kind of style of uh, dust filters but anyway about time to move on to the pros and cons okay pros and cons time now, pros, this is at least in my opinion, I think this case looks extraordinarily good. Especially for the $99 I paid for it. Now, it's currently, right now, at this second, on Newegg for $160. I, there's definitely some better cases to have versus this for that price. I don't, I don't think I would personally spend my money on it. But if you think it's cool and you want it and you think it's worth that, all the power to you. After watching this video, you can make your own decision. Now, I've got all the side panels off just to show you um, a possible con. It's a dust magnet. I just cleaned this yesterday, and it's already sucking up a bunch of dust and debris. Because there is no dust filter for the front intake. There was a dust filter for the exhaust, top exhaust, which was just you know, impeding the airflow of my top radiator fan, so I took it off. Dust isn't really going to get past my radiator anyway while it's just sitting there. But that's a kind of a con. There's no dust filters for the intakes of the thing. At least for the front. Now, 
there is at the bottom the power supply dust filter goes from the back all the way to about right there so it's also the dust filter for these so it does have a dust filter for all of those which I should probably clean today at some point anyway now another pro I would say is I do like the layout of this very nice you got plenty of USB ports I don't think you're gonna need more than four and it still has the old-school uh, headphone and mic port for the people that don't use USB or whatever and I like cases that include uh, reset buttons and I also think it's cool that they gave you a secondary way to change through all of the RGB <clears throat> now speaking of RGB that's probably a con it's both pro and a con I think they look sweet but sometimes I wish I could sync them to my motherboard so there's no syncing these. They are just controlled by that little box in the, on the other side of the computer there that I showed you previously in the video. But they do have plenty of cool modes. Like I've got this set up right now. I like this rainbow mode. It's pretty freaking sweet to show off like the rings. Normally when I'm just sitting here, I'll have it just as a static color. But for showing off, I like to put all of the RGBs just on rainbow mode just to show all the cool effects. I think a lot of reviewers will refer to that as unicorn puke, but it's definitely a nice way to show off the RGB. Anyway, though, getting sidetracked here. All right, another pro. Since the fans don't push a lot of air, they're only 1500 RPM, they're pretty quiet, even though there's no way to control them, at least as far as I can tell. They're just sitting at full tilt all the time, full speed. So if I didn't have these also blowing at full speed, then it wouldn't be so loud. Right now, I'm sure you can hear it. It sounds pretty loud. I've tested it right now on idle sitting on the desktop. It's about 38, and on full load, it gets up to about 46. So it's not the loudest thing in the world, but it's not the quietest thing either as far as this case goes, but a lot of that has to do with my components, not really the case. Case fans by itself are very, very quiet. It's a very quiet ch uh, chassis. Now, another con, in my opinion, the whole back side panel being made out of glass, it looks cool, but it makes it really hard to cable manage properly. Like, I would have liked to have these, you know, more unified, but the way I have to have them for the glass to fit properly, they look like that. I did a much better job on the motherboard, but still, could have done good on those too if I had more room. But on the other hand, on another Pro, when you put all the side panels back on, the case looks extraordinarily good, in my opinion, like I said. So it's a trade-off with tempered glass, really. Now another thing, without these fans, if you had like crazy hardware that pumps out a lot of heat, you might run into some heat problems. But you could always put more powerful fans in, or you could add some fans on the bottom like I did, and now I, it gets better temps than my old case. It really wasn't that much worse than my H440 anyway. They were pretty identical. They were within like a degree or two. So that's like within margin of error. The temperature in my room could have just been different that day, for all I know. But now it's getting like... 5 to 10 degrees, or not 10, it's more like 5 to 8 degrees difference. 10 is an exaggeratory. That was like an oddity that only happened once. So we're not going to count that. Well, that's about all I can think of as far as pros and cons go. So... Hopefully this uh, video helps people decide whether or not they'd like this case enough to buy or not. I think it's kind of cool. It's definitely a neat case. Like I said, I don't know if it's worth the full $160 they want now, but if you can catch it on sale for for 100 to 130 I'd say it's probably worth that. Just for the sake of being kind of unique and you don't see it every day. But anyway, if anybody has any more questions that I might, or because I might have forgotten to mention something. A lot of times when I make these videos, certain things just slip my mind. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to ask. Just leave a comment. And until the next one, 
Peace out, guys.